Hi, everyone. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing one of my former accounting students. His name is Johnny Jeter. Johnny was my uh, student at Santa Monica College. This, can you believe this? This is back in 2000, spring of 2011. Uh, he took my Principles of Accounting II class um, at Santa Monica College. And then afterwards, he transferred to Cal State Northridge to major in accounting. And upon graduation, he worked for the uh, prestigious global CPA firm Deloitte for a few years in their Los Angeles office. And then subsequently, he transferred over to, to the Phoenix office. Today, Johnny is an IT audit manager at a company called Insight, which is a Fortune 500 company. So Johnny, obviously you've had a distinguished career. However, what's really interesting um, is that prior to uh, going to college, you actually followed a non-traditional path. You actually wrestled uh, for the WWE, which is the World Wrestling Entertainment, and uh, you had a chance to to work with or wrestle with um, a lot of famous uh, wrestlers like Triple H, Ric Flair, uh, Bobby Lashley, just to say a few names out there. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, you had a chance to win the WWE uh, Tag Team Championship, uh, which I think is quite prestigious. So thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview with me today. So the first question I had for you is uh, briefly talk about your life as a WWE wrestler. Um, I think you wrestled for about five years or so. Um, can you talk about that? And what are some of your accomplishments? I, I listed a few already, but what are some of your accomplishments during that time with the WWE? Yeah, so uh, I wrestled from September 2001, right after 9-11, to August 2008. Um, Moved to Louisville, Kentucky, uh, lived in someone's basement. I worked at Chili's six days a week, uh, wrestled once a week on the weekends, um, and got my start there. About, after about a little bit less than two years, I signed my first WWE developmental contract. Um, I was there for about another year and a half, uh, and then I got called to the big leagues and was on the road full-time, uh, signed a new contract, and then I did that for a couple of years, and I left the company in August 2008. Um, I'd say my biggest accomplishments there, uh, obviously, were winning the uh, tag titles the day after WrestleMania. Yeah. Three, which, uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah, um, I'd say that. And uh, and honestly, I think the biggest one that stands out to me was before I made it up there uh, was actually getting the phone call for the very first time to say, uh, Johnny, you know, this is World Wrestling Entertainment. We'd like to sign you to a contract. I think, you know, when you you're all of us, you're you know, you're really you're in a tough place, you're working full time, you're not making much money, and you're kind of just crossing your fingers, hoping one, that they'll see something in you and sign you. Uh, so when you get that call and they offer you a contract for the very first time, it's, uh, it's a cool feeling. You know, you wrestle, I think you wrestle for about five years. And so what made you decide to leave the WWE and, and go back to school to uh, reinvent yourself? You know, I think for me, I just realized that environment wasn't right for me. Um, I, mm -hmm. I made it up there. I accomplished what I want to accomplish. Um, but I just wasn't happy. And I think I just wanted to kind of close that chapter in my life, uh, and, and start a new one, open a new door. And for me, uh, that was going back to college. Um, mm -hmm. and I initially didn't really know what I wanted to do at first. Um, but I guess that's what community college is for, right? You know, you're trying to figure out what you want to do with those kind of core classes. Um, but eventually kind of, uh, declared accounting as my major, um, and ended up uh, getting my degree, transferring to Cal State Northridge and going from there. Yeah, and speaking about accounting, you know, I always find it fascinating that you ch elected to choose accounting because, you know, besides yourself, there's other um, WWE uh, wrestlers. They reinvent themselves, but they become like personal trainers or, um, or actors, right? So I always wonder, like, you know, you're a very charismatic guy. Why not major in theater arts and become an actor, right? Be in some sort of movie or perhaps, you know, you're very well built, athletic. Why don't you study um, kinesiology and become a personal trainer or something? Accounting, I mean, I'm, you, know, you were successful, but yeah, right. uh, <laughs> right, <there's> accounting, right? <laughs> well, I don't think wrestlers are really known for their acting. <laughs> so, okay. but for me, uh, I think I just was just ready for a change. And initially when I went back to school, um, I wanted to get into physical therapy. I kind of wanted to, you know, do my core classes, satisfy my physical therapy prerequisites. I knew I wanted to get my business degree, but I didn't know in what. Um, mm -hmm. And then I think it was while I was working in a physical therapy clinic, um, I approached you because I wanted to get some accounting experience and update my resume to kind of be more attractive to potential employers. Um, mm -hmm. 
And so when I was talking to you, you're kind of letting me know, you know, you know, all the business degrees are great, marketing, finance, you know, management, but accounting is, is probably, you know, the best degree you can get because you can literally do anything with accounting. Um, and so you, just after that conversation, I was just, it wasn't my favorite class, <laughs> but, but it kind of grew on me and I ended up really liking it. And I didn't realize uh, what doors accounting could open for me until I really kind of made the effort to explore the, those, those specific opportunities. So, uh, so yeah, after that conversation, uh, I ended up getting an internship at Deloitte. And at the time, I didn't know anything about uh, big four accounting firms, KPMG, PwC, uh, EY, Deloitte. I didn't know anything about that. Um, but I ended up learning and, and the different avenues of career paths I could, could take. Um, I ended up choosing advisory and uh, uh, eventually getting into IT audit. I know you've had a great level of success, but you and I have spoken in the past. I mean, it wasn't an easy path, right? I mean, there were a lot of challenges you faced. So could you just briefly talk about what were some of the major challenges you faced um, when you were at the community college level? And then later when you eventually transferred to Cal State Northridge, I mean, there are even more challenges there, right? When you go to uh, like a top school like that. I mean, Cal State Northridge is, is one of the top programs for the CSU systems and accounting. So can you talk about those challenges that you faced uh, but more importantly, can you also mention how you were ultimately able to overcome these challenges? Because I, I want students um, to realize that, hey, you know, it's not easy, but, but people did make it through. So if you don't mind just sharing a little bit about that, please. Absolutely. For me, uh, I went from making a lot of money to, to kind of being just a normal guy showing up to work, working at 95 every day. And for me, that was in physical therapy. Um, and again, living in California, California is very expensive, especially Los Angeles. So for me, financially, working full time, going to school full time, finding time to study, finding time to make good grades, um, that that and and kind of have some life outside of school if, if it's yeah. possible. Uh, that that was a big struggle for me. So finance, uh, financial pro issues, I'd say were a big one, uh, but also work life balance, right? Like you you kind of want to maintain your sanity. You can't devote your, you know, your entire self to, to school without, you know, feeling like you're lacking. You got to find some kind of balance um, in life to kind of keep your sanity. So I think uh, work-life balance, that was also uh, a big one. And it was also a humbling experience. Again, yeah, I went from wrestling to, to you know, working in physical therapy clinic and, and showing up to college classes. And not that I'm above that or anything, but it was a humbling experience. And so uh, just kind of, you know, taking the time to appreciate the fact that I'm paying for school, like mm -hmm. I want to be here. Um, and, and it's a great opportunity because I think community college or even Santa Monica College for that matter, uh, just opens so many doors and there's, there's, there's literally, literally endless possibilities at your fingertips to explore who you want to be and what you want to do for the rest of your life. And once I took that outlook, I realized, wow, this could be one of the best times of my life because I can kind of slow down, take two steps back, take three steps forward and figure out what I want to do with the rest of my life. So Money comes and goes. Money always ends up working out. But I think trying to, to, to be happy with, with what you got and making the best with what you're doing, um, I'd say that's the best way to kind of get through times like that. So after you finished college, um, you had a chance to, you worked for a few years for the, the global CPA firm uh, Deloitte. Uh, I believe they're currently, well, at least the time you're working there, they're the largest CPA firm in the world. So it's a quite prestigious position. And you worked in their advisory services practice. Can you tell uh, students uh, a little bit about uh, that line of work and what were some of your, um, what were some of your duties as well as some of your experiences working for advisory services? Sure. So when I went into advisory, I was mostly doing SOX compliance. So SOX compliance, you know, each company, uh, and you know, pretty much the CEOs and CFOs have to sign up on that, on the financial statements uh, for the shareholders to kind of reasonably assure them that the financials are complete and accurate and that the shareholders can rely on that information. So companies have internal controls in place on the finance side. Think of it like internal audit. There's the, there's the finance side and there's the IT side. Uh, and so, you know, those internal controls, one might be like a director of finance reconciles a profit loss statement to a general ledger on a monthly basis. So you would come in and say, Hey, show me February. And maybe mm -hmm. they, they signed and dated it, but they didn't tick mark anything. So how do I know that they're really doing the review? So right. if you pass or fail it, that's really kind of your 
you know, you have to be kind of like skeptical and make your own determination. But then when they, they have time to remediate, let's say you come back in the fall and because there's a population, let's say at 12, there's two samples, you know, you come back, let's say November, oh, hey, I, I saw you tick and tied it. I saw you signed and dated it. I see your accuracy and completeness. That's how you validate that you have a complete and accurate report. I'm going to pass this control. So in a way, you're kind of like a detective trying to mm -hmm. figure out um, if the internal controls are operating effectively and potentially find fraud if it's there, which is kind of a, it's kind of a scary thought, but in a way, <laughs> it's kind of cool. But all, yeah. of, all of the IT systems that support financial reporting, uh, there's also internal controls in place. So for example, like, you know, if you're, if you're newly hired as an accounts payable specialist to a new firm, you might require certain access, let's say to SAP, three specific roles. I see, okay, let me get a list of all the new hires for the period. Let me get an, an access list for SAP. Okay, this, you know, so John Doe needs these specific roles, but maybe I see four roles, three that he's supposed to have, and let's say he was accidentally granted admin access. So now he has access to, you know, approved journal entries, post journal entries. Um, it's kind of a segregation of duties issue there. Um, so there's IT controls, terminations, backups, all the systems being backed up timely. If not, or someone following up, um, change management, uh, privilege access, we assess all the administrators for all those systems. Um, all of that essentially encapsulates internal audit. And I worked initially on the finance side, but I was more drawn to the IT side because it seemed more consistent across the various clients that I was coming across. Um, so yeah, I worked at Deloitte for about three years, um, three years, a little bit longer. Um, and made senior there, but probably the last year I was there, I switched to the IT side. Um, then I went to another company called Carlisle, worked there about a year and a half on the IT side, and then after I left there, uh, I went to Insight, where uh, I was promoted to manager, and now I run everything um, IT, everything SOX related from an IT side, I manage that. What advice can you share with students about succeeding in accounting classes? as well as in the accounting profession? Because the idea is, you know, you went through some struggles, right? And I am hoping these students will take some of your advice so they don't have to relive those challenges, or at least they'll be able to overcome them a lot more easier than you did. I would say kind of stay focused. I think when, when you're paying for school, uh, you want to make the most of it. You don't want to waste it. I think it's easily, easy to get distracted um, for whatever reason, but again, if you ever feel like you're going down that path, really think about the fact that you're investing in yourself. And you're essentially investing to have a, a, a good future for yourself. Um, so in college can get very expensive. So I think stay focused. One way you can stay focused, I think, is to kind of outline your short-term goals, your long-term goals, um, maybe your development areas, and then just kind of get like an, an action plan of how you want to um, improve those areas and how you're going to achieve those short-term goals, long-term goals. And some of those short-term goals may be like, oh, pass accounting class or, or attend one or two networking events or attend meet the firms and, and give your resume to five different, you know, four different big four firms and maybe one mid-tier firm. Um, but essentially, like, you're, you're going out of your way to kind of set yourself up for success um, by identifying those goals and, and the actual plan to, to, to meet those goals. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not easy. It's tough. I know it's different from the outside looking in and the inside looking out. Um, Ming and I have, I think you and I have both been there, um, but I think uh, for any student that's in accounting, I would say just kind of really think about what you want to do for the rest of your life. And if, if, if your career path is in accounting, um, you know, if you're unsure or sure about certain things, just, you know, reach out to the, the resources you have, stay focused, and uh, if it's for you, great. Um, and if it's not, that's okay, too. But that's the whole point of what college is for. I found out the last time we spoke that you're – you're actually still doing a little bit of wrestling. Now it's not your, you know, not your, you have your regular full-time job, you know, but you, I guess you can't get that wrestling out of your system. So I, I heard you're doing a little bit of wrestling on the side just for fun uh, once, once a month. Can you, can you talk a little bit about that briefly? And also I'll put a, a, a link or some sort of description below so that uh, you can, uh, you know, you can maybe, you know, in case anybody wants to go check you out, uh, in one of those wrestling matches. Hopefully they won't talk to you afterwards about accounting. Well, maybe you would <laughs> like me. Right? Yeah. But um, could, you, could you just talk about that? Oh, yeah, I see you have a little belt there. Talk yeah. about this new uh, organization you're involved with and uh, a little bit about wrestling, yeah. 
Yeah, no, uh, I currently wrestle for Championship Wrestling from Arizona. Um, they're a major company. They have Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, Championship Wrestling from Memphis. Um, but essentially, I wrestle there once a month. Current Arizona State Champion. Um, <laughs> honestly, okay. I just do it for fun. Um, yeah. It's kind of a way in work-life balance, right? Like, I think if I was just going <laughs> nine to five every day and uh, just coming home, I, I, I felt like something was, was lacking in my life. And, and it wasn't necessarily wrestling. I think it was just kind of performing. Um, so for me, just getting involved in one way or another, whether it's a wrestling role or it's a talk, you know, a speaking role, uh, just being involved kind of, you know, uh, is, is kind of a nice uh, way to kill the monotony of the <laughs> typical nine to five uh, job. And it's fun because then my coworkers can come uh, see me wrestle or we go out afterwards and uh, it's just fun to be involved in. So uh, yeah, that's why I, I, I do it. But um, you can, it's on the Fight TV app. You can check out uh, mm -hmm. AZ. Um, you, all the shows are posted there. It's televised locally here in Phoenix on Channel 7. I believe it'll at 1 o'clock in the morning on Sundays. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you're ever in the area or if you're ever uh, on the app or, or in Phoenix, check it out. Well, thank you so much. As a professor, I'm really proud of everything you've accomplished. You've done everything. You know, you work really hard, and I'm glad that you've achieved the success that you have today. And plus, you still get to uh, wrestle a little bit <laughs> on the side. So uh, congratulations. Thank you for coming today to speak uh, with my students. I'm doing these video recordings so that they can hear from both you as well as some other speakers about the accounting profession so um, they can have a smoother career path. So thank you so much. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.